Have you ever imagined inviting friends or relatives over for lunch or dinner and leaving them utterly speechless, maybe even a bit jealous of your cooking skills? Well, if you have, this recipe could check all the right boxes. It's incredibly easy and even a beginner with no experience can master it. We'll be using a standard baking tray that comes with most ovens, we'll be talking about store-bought ingredients and I'll be sharing some time-saving tips and tricks to make your life easier in the kitchen and make your pizza look as professional as the ones you can get from a pizzeria. And your guests will find it hard to believe that you made it from scratch. Let's start by dissolving 4 grams of fresh yeast in water. It doesn't have to be lukewarm, cold water works just as well. Then put the dissolved yeast into a container with around 630-650 grams of water. Followed by 12 grams of extra virgin olive oil. And 25 grams of salt. I should note that yeast is sensitive to salt. But in this case, the yeast has already been dissolved and they won't be in contact with each other for more than a couple of minutes, so the yeast won't be negatively affected by yeast ultimate. Thoroughly mix the wet ingredients and then add them to the flour. You can use this method whenever you are certain about the amount of water required by the flour. In my case, I'm working with a new flour that's behaving differently than expected and definitely needs slightly less water, but I'm going to talk about this later. My bowl contains 800 grams of strong flour with a W factor between 300 and 320. This quantity is enough for two trays, but do not worry about that just yet. You will find the proportions in the description box. Keep mixing the wet ingredients into the dry until they are well combined. I ended up with a slightly shaggy dough. How can we fix it? Add water gradually and the other ingredients separately like I showed in the easiest focaccia video. It's the best way to test how your specific flour reacts to moisture. But in this channel, we bake despite the bumps in the road, and for this recipe a little margin of error is alright. The ingredients are well combined and now I'm going to let them rest in the fridge for 30-60 minutes. After an hour, give the dough a gentle fold inside the bowl with a spatula, just until it looks smoother and it doesn't stick to the spatula anymore. I did about 10 folds. Pop the dough back in the fridge for 15 minutes. Repeat the folding inside the bowl. The key is to stretch the dough by lifting it. Let the dough rest in the fridge again for 15 minutes. Then fold again. The action of stretching the dough by lifting it helps the gluten get into shape. If you're feeling fancy, you can transfer the dough to a lightly wet surface and fold each side over the other. Much like folding a towel or a t-shirt, for example. Or if you're up for it, try some slap and fold. But my dough is a bit sticky, and honestly, I don't see the point of this sophistication, so I'm keeping it simple. Anyways, before you transfer the dough, grease the bowl with some oil and then let it chill for at least 12 up to 20 hours. Long leavening times are the secret sauce for making the yeast work its magic, creating a light, highly digestible and flavorful pizza. The next day after letting the dough rest in the fridge overnight, you see that it's tripled in volume and my bowl is almost full. Wet your work surface a bit. Transfer the dough. Give it a few folds to give it some structure. The dough is already smoother and less sticky. Let it rest on the counter for about 15 minutes to adapt to the new room temperature. 
As I mentioned earlier, I'm planning to bake two trays of pizza. So I'll wait the dough to split it. My dough weighs 1,500 grams in total, which means 750 grams for each tray of about 30 by 40 centimeters. But my oven tray is a bit larger, so instead of using 750 grams, I'll go with 900 grams of dough. The remaining 600 grams is for a smaller tray, which you'll see me use in the next video. Don't miss that. Now let's return to the dough. Fold the dough a few times. Put it back into the bowl and let it rise at room temperature or in a warm place for 2 or 3 hours until it has doubled in volume. In the meantime, let's talk about the ingredients for the topping. You can make your own tomato sauce if you like, or you can opt for a store-bought one. In that case, I recommend choosing high-quality products. Buy glass jar tomato sauce instead of canned. Sometimes canned stuff tastes a bit metallic. It can ruin the overall taste of your pizza and it's not worth it. For example, this tomato sauce is made from fresh organic seasonal tomatoes and it doesn't contain preservatives, artificial flavors or thickeners. It has been processed at a low temperature in an airtight environment, preserving all the properties of fresh tomatoes. Look how dense and beautiful this sauce is, just like a fresh tomato sauce. Fresh mozzarella must be at room temperature, just like the sauce. I'm using three fresh mozzarellas for the larger tray and one for the smaller one. You might have noticed this mozzarella doesn't release much liquid when you slice it. That's because I went for the light version. It has less water, so you don't have to worry about draining it to get rid of excess moisture, which can sometimes make a mess in the oven. Light mozzarella still gives you that fresh taste without the extra water. Before turning on the oven, take out the tray and preheat it to the highest temperature using conventional mode with upper and lower heat. Once the dough has doubled in size, generously sprinkle the work surface with semolina flour. Flip the bowl and let the dough drop onto the counter. A sprinkle of semolina on top and stretch it out by gently pressing the sides and the center making sure to distribute the dough evenly and trying to make rectangular shape. Slide your hands under the dough and lift it using the back of your hands before transferring it to the baking tray. Adjust the dough inside the tray covering the entire surface evenly without applying too much pressure. Now top it with tomato sauce Drizzle extra virgin olive oil along the edges of the door touching the tray and also on top. Add some salt to the sauce to bring out the sauce's flavor. Bake for 10 to 30 minutes on the lowest rack. Take the pizza out of the oven, add fresh mozzarella on top, then back in the oven, this time on the middle rack, and bake for at least 10 minutes, or up to 12-13 minutes based on your preferences. 
you see that the mozzarella looks perfect and the oil caramelized the crust, giving it the golden crispy texture. Some viewers express concerns about the use of oil, but I don't eat pizza or focaccia on a daily basis, and when I do, it's got to be a real treat, right? Now it's time to take pizza out of the oven. You'll notice that thanks to the semolina, nothing sticks to the tray, and transferring the pizza to a wire rack from cooling is a breeze. I'm adding on top some fresh oregano leaves from my garden, but basil works just as well. I didn't have fresh basil at the moment, and oregano is a great alternative if you like the flavor. Check out this pizza slice. The texture is perfect, with lovely air bubbles and a nice thickness, and the bottom is golden and super crisp. Some people like the pizza with those dark spots on top, but this is a matter of personal preference so feel free to adjust the baking time accordingly. Tell me in the comments what you think about this pizza. It's almost like it came straight from a pizzeria, doesn't it? That crown with those airy bubbles is so perfect and delicious. I couldn't resist. It's really impossible. The crust is incredibly crispy. Light, airy, and bursting with flavor. I hope you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it, leave a comment, consider subscribing to my channel and if you like my videos don't forget to hit the bell icon for notifications. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time!